When I'm 80 years old. When I'm 90, hopefully when I'm 100 years old. Uh, be able to interact with things I always worry about is, is being dependent on somebody. And Healthy. I would continue to be engaged and productive. I hope to become an old, young, active person. Over the course of human history, most people died before the age of 10, with an exceptional few living into their 60s and 70s. Around 150 years ago, a remarkable shift occurred, and the average length of life began to increase. Every decade, about two years were added to average life expectancy. This trend continued in Western Europe and North America until, by the close of the 20th century, life expectancy had doubled for most people in the developed world. In those additional 30 years of life that we added in the 20th century, we call the first longevity revolution. It was primarily improvements in public health, like clean water, uh, sanitation, indoor living and working environments, controlled uh, air temperature. These are all the things that created very harsh conditions for people in the early part of the 20th century. We wanted to live longer. We didn't want our children to die. We succeeded in doing this. Uh, and we got exactly what we, we wished for. Today, the numbers of people living to old age and to super old age are rising around the globe. To live a long life is a monumental achievement, and longer lifespans are precious gifts for everyone. But there is another side to this story. 50% of the children born now will live naturally to over 100 years. But if we don't increase health span, what it means is that individuals are gonna still succumb to cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and neurodegenerative disease at some point between their 40s and their 70s. Developed nations are spending a growing share of their total wealth trying to hold back a fast approaching silver tsunami of chronic diseases and disabilities of aging. Baby boomers who were born uh, post-World War II are now aging into what we sometimes refer to as retirement age. Uh, post 65 and we're seeing this in some of our social programs and the upheaval that that's going to cause to society is tremendous. This is referred to as the silver tsunami and it should also be said that this is not a phenomenon that's unique to the United States. That we're seeing this around the world uh, in many countries. Escalating costs of health care and long-term care for growing populations of older people are driving government spending to new heights. A tide of chronic diseases born of the longevity revolution is what lies at the heart of the European debt crisis, a harbinger of what may await many nations, including the health care system of the United States. One of the major concerns with an aging population is that Medicare costs are spiraling out of control. They're going up by tens of billions of dollars on a yearly basis, and it's threatening to break our uh, federal budgets. Uh, right now, we're spending 19% of our GDP on health care, and it's going to keep going up. We live in a world that's exquisitely designed to support young life, and we need to very quickly develop a culture that supports us all the way through. As a geriatrician, I have seen people coming into the office, and I think it's an experience that all of my colleagues have experienced, who have multiple things going on, what we call multiple chronic conditions. And all of those things combined make for a real challenge to optimize quality of life and health for that individual uh, and to manage it in the constraints that are provided in the current medical environment. Magnified by hundreds of millions of people around the globe, the illnesses and infirmities of old age are a gathering storm of dependency, leading to lower quality of life and towering social burdens. Taking on the bulk of this burden are members of their families, the majority of whom are women. For families and caregivers of frail older individuals, there are real challenges to quality of life. Uh, the individual who is requiring care doesn't have the autonomy and independence that they're accustomed to. Uh, the caregivers are often very stressed, uh, and that stress translates into problems with their health, uh, challenges with maintaining employment, um, challenges with being properly reimbursed. Uh, it, it gets to be uh, a real conundrum. With age, people face multiple threats at the same time to life and health which means that even total victory over cancer, cardiovascular disease, or dementia would not extend high quality of life. 
There is always another disease of aging awaiting to take its place. Aging is a major risk factor for all the diseases that we are afraid of and we die from. And unless we change the rate of aging, all we're going to hope for is exchange one disease for another because the only way to treat all of them, to prevent all of them, is delaying actually the aging. The questions then become, what can be done to help ensure a longer health span? And what research is most likely to produce innovations for a better future? Scientists, politicians, doctors increasingly agree that that investment must be made in medical research that aims to better understand how the aging of our bodies leads to the diseases that threaten not just our lifespan, but our health span. We are no genetically hardier than our ancestors were 10,000 years ago. This increase, this dramatic increase in life expectancy came about because of science and technology and wide scale behavioral changes and social norms that improved the, the safety of the world in which we live. So science and technology got us here, and now we need to apply science and technology again in order to make sure that these added years of life improve quality of life at all ages, not just in old age, but again, all, all the way through. If we invest now in figuring out ways to extend health span so that these people are still highly functional and they have low health care costs, we'll find that it could be a very positive thing, but we have to really invest now into finding ways to keep people healthy longer. Scientists who study aging are in general agreement that the process isn't set in stone, that the aging process can be sped up by genetics or poor lifestyle choices, but that it can also be slowed down. This means that research that slows aging has the potential to extend healthy years of life and simultaneously postpone the costly and harmful conditions of old age. So in some sense, we're playing whack-a-mole. You know, you knock out one disease and then people are going to die of another disease or develop another disease. What if we could slow that biological process? Scientists have found that alterations in cell replacement and repair, stress response and inflammation are key influencers in the development of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and other debilitating and costly conditions of later life. These are also the essential changes taking place in our aging bodies that lead to loss of strength, changes in vision, arthritic joints, and other declines. But is it really possible to do this? To slow the rate of aging to protect against disease? We're now coming to realize that aging appears to be a modifiable risk factor, potentially. So we have some reason to be optimistic that in humans we might be able to delay age-related diseases as a group by targeting fundamental aging mechanisms. This would be absolutely transformative. So what was science fiction just a few years back is becoming reality. Even a marginal delay in the declines of aging could give us a profoundly effective and efficient means to prevent, postpone, or reduce the impact of diseases that threaten healthy lives. However, the great majority of U.S. federal medical research funds goes to the study of chronic diseases in isolation from each other and largely divorced from the underlying aging processes that lead to them all. As American taxpayers, we are already supporting medical research through the National Institutes of Health. The NIH is the envy of the world and Congress allocates over $30 billion a year to the effort. Both by history and by habit, most of our national investment in medical research is aimed at research that is specific to individual diseases. What is driving all of these diseases that we're seeing in an aging society is the same damage taking place in our aging bodies. In order to make the greatest progress that we need to make, we need to get those scientists out of their silos we need to foster more collaboration, more sharing of information, setting common goals, having them pursue the goal of healthier aging for our population across the board. It is an achievable goal, and it's one that could be the ultimate legacy of this generation. But there is evidence that priorities are beginning to change. Three or four years ago, I started a, a group at the NIH, it's a trans-NIH group, called geroscience. So that's the science that addresses the intersection between basic biology of aging 
and why does it become a risk for diseases? There was a lot of enthusiasm, so 20 different institute directors joined. So basically, we're trying to do some work within the NIH to try to raise consciousness in other institutes about the importance of aging for their interests. What if science succeeds in resetting the aging clock in each of us so that it takes 70 or even 80 years to reach age 60 in body and mind? What would that kind of future look like? A future of not just a long lifespan, but a long health span. My vision for healthy aging is my grandmother. <laughs> she lived independently in her house for 72 years. She had to go into assisted living six months before she died. She was active in her bowling league until her mid-90s. She drove a car until her mid-90s. She was mentally sound up until two days before she died. Aging research has the potential to develop strategies to help people have that kind of a life where they're still active and happy and engaged in, in their 90s. And I think if we could achieve that goal, that would be a major victory on all fronts. There's no question that uh, health span, the extension of a healthy lifespan, uh, pays economic dividends that would extend for generations. I mean, we've estimated in our own research that a minor deceleration in the rate of aging, very small change for the U.S. would add over $7 trillion to the national economy over the next couple of decades. And we actually think that's an underestimate. We think that it would actually be significantly larger. So the, so the benefits in terms of uh, economic value and in terms of, of personal value, just how you enjoy your life is tremendous. We all know this personally. And imagine this at a population level, not just applying to an individual, but to over 300 million people. Some of our brightest and most dedicated research scientists are working on ways to unravel the secrets of aging so we might finally realize our collective and ancient wish for more years of quality life. We're talking about a fundamental game changer in the world of public health that will change the way in which we live our lives. And that's the way I see a successful intervention to slow the biological process of aging. That an intervention that slows aging, it, if it occurs in this century, and I think it will, I think it will occur in the lifetimes of most people alive today, will be, in my view, the most important medical discovery in history. The potential of aging research is not to make us older for a longer time. We want to slow the hands of time so that we might enjoy more years of healthy, vigorous life. Why shouldn't this be our next great national priority? I love working with older people as a geriatrician, but I, I am growing maybe a little bit tired of trying to prescribe better wheelchairs, better walkers, ways of preventing falls, ways of preventing incontinence ways of preventing age-related diseases, I'd much rather have a way, and so would all my clinical geriatrics colleagues, have a way where we can stop those things from even becoming an issue in the first place. It can happen with your help. To learn more and get involved, visit healthspancampaign.org. Mm -hmm.